presence, Tracy Mormon, Tim Craig, Robin Skaggs, Hope Duke, Jay Oliphant, Heather Finley. Absent is Jody Moore. I know she's listening virtually. Stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I am very excited tonight to introduce you to our Teachers of the Year for this year. We are doing it a little bit differently than Gravit has done it in the past. Um, in the past, Gravit has not been submitting our Gravit Teacher of the Year to the State Teacher of the Year um, contest, and so our teachers haven't had an opportunity for regional or statewide recognition. And we, we have too good of teachers to miss out on that opportunity. And so um, each one of our schools has selected their Teacher of the Year, and we're going to recognize those tonight. The four recipients also submitted an application for District Teacher of the Year that's very similar to the application that goes in for State Teacher of the Year recognition. And on your table, I gave you a copy of the rubric that shows how the Arkansas Teacher of the Year application is scored and also a copy of the applications that our um, building teachers of the year submitted just so you could see um, all of the incredible things that they've done and the, their, the things that they value um, in their work. Um, it was just too good and too special for you, you to miss out on seeing that. So our first teacher that I'm going to recognize tonight is our Teacher of the Year from Gravit High School, Sue Cluck. Sue, you can come on up if you want to. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Sue and highlight some things in her application. She co-leads professional development on technology in her building. She is working with outside agencies with Dr. Susan Rupp with Monarch City USA to add Gravit as a registered Monarch City. She leads the Environmental Club, and the Environmental Club have put together bouquets of flowers for Gravit High School staff and have a goal in the future to deliver bouquets to people in the community. She likes to help students explore the realms of environmental stewardship to create lifelong compassionate environmentalists. She has invited Master Naturalist and local businesses to be a part of her science classroom. She loves lessons where the depths of the lesson reach far beyond academics, when they involve working with invested community members, students from other classes, our hands-on learning activities, and lessons that foster a sense of empowering a community through service-oriented learning. She says that it's important for students to know they can make a difference in the world, no matter how small. This year, she's been involved with the Student Voice Institute through the Arkansas Leadership Academy. And I love this. She says, I like to think that gardening and education are a lot alike. I truly believe that through our everyday interactions with our students, we sow and nurture the seeds of righteousness, hope, creativity, wonder, and civility with the greatest hope that they reap the rewards later on in life. We must never give up even in the roughest day or school year. I hope all Arkansas teachers know their value in the lives of their students and believe that they can and do make a difference in the lives of those students. And um, we all know and Gravit High School recognizes that Sue is absolutely one of those teachers that makes a difference in the lives of their students. So congratulations to Sue for being Gravit High School's Teacher of the Year.
Our Gravit Middle School Teacher of the Year is Jackie Gallion, if you want to come on up. Jackie has been part of a grade level math team that has consistently been number one in Northwest Arkansas for sixth grade math. She's a part of her school's leadership team. Being on the leadership team means she's able to participate in things like the RTI and PLC summits and then be one of those members who brings back the information and presents information to her peers. She's also a mentor for the newest member of the math team. And I can't think of anyone better to mentor our, our math teachers and grab it. She says, I try to make a very big deal of connecting whatever our learning target is to something they can relate to in real life. She loves the look on a student's face when they connect what they're doing to real world situations. She hopes they all find a way to connect what we're learning to something in the real world in order to make more sense of it. Jackie talked about um, student mental health and mental health resources for our students and our teachers. She talks about how students can't be fully engaged in learning unless their basic needs have been met. And as teachers, we should constantly be on the lookout for the well-being of our students. She also wants to remind teachers not to forget to advocate for themselves as well. She says, passion is what makes a good teacher great. And passion is what drives us to continue to do the work that we do. And I can tell you that Jackie has great passion for her work and for the students that she serves. And I am so glad that we are honoring her tonight as the Gravit Middle School Teacher of the Year. Our Gravit Upper Elementary Teacher of the Year is Amber Sizemore. You may come on up. Oh, Glenn, oh, sorry. Glenn Duffy, Amber Sizemore, come on up. <laughs> Wrong school, right person. Mm -hmm. I'm on my Amber page. <laughs> Amber is one of 3% of teachers in the nation who have earned national board certification. She is also actively involved in Solution Tree Professional Learning Community Arkansas Leadership Academy Team Institute and Arkansas Leadership Academy Teacher Institute. She is a leader among her colleagues. She has been nominated for Teacher of the Year three times and been awarded Teacher of the Year twice. She serves as a team leader for second grade at Glenn Duffy. She helps support the other teachers with things they may need, both personally and professionally to make sure her grade level team is making progress towards and meeting their team, school, and district goals. A contribution that she has made to the district is serving as a PBIS behavior tools instructor. She supports teachers with student behavior using proactive methods intended to prevent or verbally de-escalate problematic behavior before it becomes a bigger issue requiring intensive intervention or support. She has volunteered to be the co-talk classroom for second grade. She serves on a variety of committees, building leadership, PTO rep, data committees, and she's been president of the courtesy committee for the last 14 years. Her goal is to create a family atmosphere that supports their staff. She loves serving the community, and one of her strengths is to support people who may be going through a difficult time or need an extra hand. She says one of the best parts about teaching is seeing the light bulb moments in students when they begin to understand something. She was also a part of created the AR Palooza for K2 students, where the goal was to motivate students to read more books and take more AR tests to earn more points. It impacted students because they begin to read more, which increased reading and motivated students to take AR tests. Her message to the teachers of Arkansas would be that they are valued and needed because their job is part of so much more than teaching. I can tell you that we value Amber and she is absolutely needed and every day everything she does for her students and for the staff at her school is way more than just teaching. So congratulations Amber.
Now, our Gravit, middle, our Gravit Upper Elementary Teacher of the Year, Emily Enzor. This is Emily's first time to be a Teacher of the Year in Gravit. She also earned Teacher of the Year honors at her previous district of Noel. Emily has a Master's of Reading degree, which has allowed her to become a reading specialist and dyslexia interventionist. Her passion has always been reading, and she loves helping students who struggle with reading. She's been a part of the district-wide snack pack distribution. This past year, between March and August, every Friday, she and other colleagues drove from house to house delivering snack packs for those in need. She's also co-chair of the Save Our Students Committee. She is a leader of the Gravit Mentoring Program. She helped implement Fluency Friday in her school, and she's recently become certified to teach the Behavior Tools class. She says, as a teacher, I was reminded how easy it is to get wrapped up in the standards and day-to-day -day of teaching and forget that under the surface, many of our students have struggles that many of us will never know about because we don't take the time to ask. Every year, she gives her students a writing prompt that says, I wish my teachers knew. This lesson helps guide her instruction in ways a pretest never could. She's a firm believer that instruction will come, but only after the relationship and trust is established. As a part of the Gravit Mentoring Program, she says the vision for this program is to grow our educators so they have a desire to be a lifelong lion for our students. Our students deserve longevity from our staff. They deserve the opportunity to build relationships with staff and know that they will be there to see them through to graduation. She says, 15 and 20 years down the road, I don't know that my students will run across me in public and say, hey, do you remember that reading passage? But they will say, thank you for taking the time to get to know me and help me through whatever life was throwing at me then. What we get to do day in and day out is a blessing. Not everyone was meant to teach, but I am so thankful to be surrounded by those that were chosen to raise and teach our future generations. And we are so fortunate, so fortunate that Emily has chosen to teach and raise our future generations here in Gravit. Congratulations. As you can see, these four um, teachers of the year are so very, very deserving. And you will also read in their applications that um, they feel the same way about the colleagues that they work with, that they represent um, many, many outstanding teachers across the district. Sue? Susan? Hang on, Susan. Hang on one minute. Uh -huh. <laughs> Our Gravit Teacher of the, key, um, uh, of the Year Committee read through all of the applications and used the state rubric to score the applications. And tonight, I am very honored to tell you that Emily Enzor is our Gravit Teacher of the Year and will be representing our district at the State Teacher of the Year competition. Yeah. Now, Susan, you can take their picture. <laughs> The next item under celebrations, um, in your packet you will see that we got a letter from the Walton Family Foundation at the Gravit School District has received a grant for $36,262 to support our tree planting initiative. This money will go toward purchasing trees to be planted on the playgrounds of Glen Duffy Elementary and Gravit Upper Elementary um, that one day will provide some shade for those playgrounds. And now we move to consent agenda. 
<clears throat> the minutes for the March 7th special meeting, March 15th regular meeting, and March 30th special <clears throat> meeting are included in our packet. And then we have the financial report, Dennis. report for fiscal period 9 March 2021 we are 75% through the year uh, for the month we received a little over 236,000 in local property taxes for a grand total of 7,748,000 to date uh, I highlighted the SPED extended school year uh, revenues weren't expecting to receive that, but we did get a check. That's to support a uh, portion of summer education for SPED students. And we also had a few teachers receive governor's computer science grants or bonuses. Uh, that fifteen hundred and eighty eight is the gross amount for benefits and taxes, so they did the net the net of that. Uh, we returned the deposit uh, to the bond buyer this month. A little bit last month about how the deposit came in at one month and went out the second month. Clearly, and Cruz and Associates have been really good in getting that done within the same month, but it creates problems when it straddles months. Uh, they closed on that deal early in, in the second month. So instead of seeing a zero, you're seeing a negative revenue there. Uh, lower left. Items in blue, I wanted to highlight those just to show you other COVID-related funding sources besides ESSER 1, 2, and 3, where we've gotten quite a bit of money. When we get an allocation from the state, particularly a federal allocation, I have to add the revenues and budgets for those. ESSER 1, we received late last year. I took the whole 266000 <coughs> really pushed our budget up 20 almost 24.2 million dollar revenue budget this year and 57 percent collections that 57 percent mr oliphant noted that the addition <coughs> of booking that budgeted revenue decreased our collection percentage uh, and you can see we received 23,800 from us or one uh, medicaid almost 10,000 this month Seven thousand so far this year. Uh, we hope that keeps coming. Up. Okay, moving to page two. Uh, in the notes, I have adjusted the debt service fund to uh, show the, the payments, the revised payments after the bond refis for this year. But of course, you can see that went down uh, substantially. When I budget revenues for one of those federal allocations, I have to hit the other side. And I have funds and, and most of those haven't been spent yet but once again this is a cash presentation of doing what it's supposed to do it's showing us where the narrative is leading and makes you say hey why is that happening here and it gives you control uh, looking at the cost centers we've got the same situation uh, with the four campuses you can see their year-to-date expenditures are down that's what we expect when we have additional expenditures to the report uh, as we know Facilities, transportation, uh, tech, if it is out there have some expenditures, those will be reduced uh, on the same as 75,000 through bonds or payments, and it will offset with that uh, the remaining ESSER funds. Uh, natural gas did catch up with us a little bit of percent. The cellular sanitation, I think we, we have a timing issue on perhaps an extra week or so. Uh, overall, we're at 68 percent. <coughs> <coughs> and uh, we're still on track of showing a 
Schedule, I've included encumbered items that we believe are accurate on our panel. Uh, at, this, at this point, probably the next month's report, SR1, will probably be fully expended. Looking at the balance sheet, uh, you look at the money market column number three, which uh, Me out. <laughs> Job, Jay. Questions for Dennis? Sure. Included in the consent agenda is the uh, resignation cheer coach, resignation of a SPED per paraprofessional, resignation of the middle school teacher, resignation of middle school receptionist, resignation of a high school teacher, resignation of a high school paraprofessional, resignation of custodian, and resignation, resignation of the shared art teacher. <coughs> Any questions? <coughs> Entertain a motion. So moved. Second. All right. So we have uh, Tracy has made a motion to approve the consent agenda. Tim has seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed? Motion passed 6 0. All right. <laughs> Superintendent report. Madam President, this is completely out of order, but I just realized that I did not ask the board's permission to amend the agenda to add two items tonight. Um, under the superintendent report, would like to add an item E to set dates for special meetings for hiring. And if the board would like to, to also set dates for um, interviewing middle school principal candidates. And then under action items, um, a 7-1 to approve policies that we did a first reading for at our last meeting. Do we add those to the agenda? A second. Second. All right. So Jay's moved that we add those. Tim, second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed 6-0. Thank you. The first item under superintendent's report is the Gravit School District's Child Nutrition Program Administrative Review. So I know you see our legislative review every year, but we also get an annual um, Child Nutrition Program Administrative Review. So enclosed in your packet is a copy of that review, and I would like to invite our director, Sheila, to come up. And um, if you have any questions about the review, you can ask her and then also give her an opportunity to share with you some things about our child nutrition program. So our child nutrition program is actually audited um, from child nutrition at the at ADE um, every three years. And so um, what they do is they come in and they, they just look our program over. They take uh, so many of our applications and really just kind of pick them apart and make sure that we're, you know, doing what we're supposed to do there. They also review our uh, meals, our accounting and claiming, make sure we're under um, uh, K-12 
calorie guidelines, making sure that we're meeting all the specific um, rules and regulations for our breakfast and lunch programs, our snack programs. And also, they uh, review and make sure that we have our civil rights on the wall, make sure we're having our health department come in and, you know, review our uh, kitchens twice a year, things like that. So it's a, you know, it, this year was a little bit different because um, we had to do everything from a virtual standpoint, so it was made it a little bit challenging. Um, it's a little bit easier when they are hands-on and can actually visually see it. And so sometimes when, uh, what I felt like this year was, it was a lot more involved with it because it was virtual. We had to scan a lot more stuff to them and send to them paper-wise through the mail. So, but uh, we're, we're excited that we're on track where we should be. And we have a good group of ladies and one man I always, I always tell him he's the, one of the best lunch ladies we have. <laughs> he, uh, He's a, he's a good one. You, you may know him. He's, his name is Keith Jensen. He works at our upper elementary. He drives the bus for Richard, and then he also uh, comes and fills in during the day with us so, just to, so he didn't have to drive back and forth, and we're happy to have him. He's a great asset to our team as well. So our review was at the middle school this year, and those girls really brought their A game. They just really are very friendly. And they are, they know their business and um, they took good care of us and showed out. I told them, I tell them all the time what a good crew they are. But we have a good crew in all of the kitchens, but they, they just really shined this year. So, you guys have any questions? I've got one. Um, I know that's a shock to everybody. Um, <laughs> so, I wrote on the top of my page, first of all, that's wonderful when I read this. So, I think that's amazing how well you all do on, on, I, mean, I just do a small portion of meals occasionally during the year and it and this year particularly was so hard even just from what little bit I did and so thank you guys for that and it's imp so impressive to get this kind of report my question that I have is not really related to this report but are you seeing any changes in the nutritional guidelines um, kind of reversing back to where um, yes so you are Yes. What are you What are you seeing? Well, what happened was this year. Well, I'm not really sure what your question. Well, is. I know that years ago, I mean, when President Obama was in, there was a lot of changes with Michelle Obama's program as far as the nutrition and the food, and it put a lot more guidelines and restrictions. And and I guess from the mom of boys, they were hungry, and yes. um, and I know that, that was not y'all's decision. And so I'm wondering because in having the meals that we've had. The last couple of years and I've, I've told my oldest son who was a faithful eater in the cafeteria but had noticed that change um that the, how much how great the meals have been so I'm curious are are they pulling you guys back to where you are more limited in those things again or are, are we still holding steady well so this year there were several waivers that came out that did allow us to give extra food and things like that simply because we were in a pandemic um and there there were a lot more food insecurities within every district so there there were some waivers that we filled out to where we could we we could do these type of things um however next year we will revert right back to where we started from unless the governor steps in and says something different again um but uh you know we're we'll have to stay on track with our whole grains and and uh, a certain amount of fresh fruits and vegetables kids like to eat um, we are moving one thing we are moving away from is some of the old USDA recipes that have been around for umpteen years I'd, I'm not even sure how long they've been around but uh, we've um, I just had a call into my area specialist today asking him about these things and um, his reply to me was um, the whole world is moving away from those um, old USD recipes so we're moving into some new recipes and things like that. So, which do have larger portions um, because they're made a little healthier. So we can give the larger portion. Now, I don't know how the taste is. We'll have to see because with that sodium guidelines that we all have to meet next year is, uh, you know, maybe kind of challenging. Yeah, they may be left left a little bland, but we'll see. Well, if there's something I think that I. 
it's fair to say that this board is not afraid to advocate mm -hmm. um, on the state and federal level even if that's needed. So just let us know if, if some emails or different things need to be done to try and help you guys continue to do what you think is best for the kids because we would be happy to do that. One thing that we uh, also did was uh, the Northwest Arkansas food directors have gotten together and we've sent a letter to um, Senator Bozeman to, um, in hopes that um, we can continue with our free meals through next year. We've seen a, a, a very large increase in our meal participation because of this, because there's not the stigma that goes with the free meals. Everybody's free right now. So um, our meal participation went up significantly. And um, so we're hopeful that they will continue on that. I don't know if they will or not, but we do have a letter in. Hopefully he will agree and can move the mountain for us. <laughs> We're hopeful. So. Any other questions? Being on the Ag Committee should help on that, right? Do what? Since he's on the Agriculture Committee, the ranking yes. Republican. He is very, very yeah. passionate about school lunch, food, yes. food security. That's, that's at the top of his list of priorities. He's the right person to, he is. to partner with on this. Comment. Thank you. Oh, Thank you for your team. Thanks. I love what I do. I really do. <laughs> yep. It shows. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you again. Now I'm going to add to today um, at lunch. I was having a conversation with some others about how good the strawberry spinach salad is. Mm -hmm. and, uh, of the week. <laughs> yep. That's high praise. That's high praise. I don't do strawberry spinach salad, but the wooden, yeah, if you're above the wooden spoon, that's, that's, that's impressive. That's a deal. That's a big deal. It is some good stuff. Don't tell them. We don't want them to hire our cooks or anything. Yeah. So. <laughs> I'm the word. All right. The next item under superintendent report is a 2019-20 LEA special annual performance report. Um, this report comes out annually. It is uh, put together by the Arkansas Department of Education on special ed programs from all of the districts in the state. And so you have a copy of what we received. And Vicki, if you want to come forward in case they have any questions or if there are any comments you want to make about that report. Any thoughts, ideas, questions so far? It looked like straight A's. Mm -hmm. We do have a couple areas that we're going to continue to work on, um, one of which is always in existence, which is our graduation rates and area. Um, I want to use this as an opportunity to kind of give you a heads up of a change that has happened in how graduation is determined for special ed students. The first cohort that's experiencing that change are our current 10th graders. Previously, students who were on an individual education plan, IDEA identified students, the IEP committee made eligibility determinations and pathway determinations for graduation. Several years ago, that changed. We have an alternate pathway to graduation is the only option outside of the traditional get all your credits, same credits as everybody else pathway. And that is very limited and very explicit to students with significant cognitive disabilities. And they have a whole list of other criteria that we have to go through. The rule of thumb we function under is these would be students who need to be cared for the rest of their life. Other than that, every student goes through and has to get the required credits. So I want to take a moment and I want to speak to the work that I keep hearing being done by the building administrators in terms of literacy, in terms of targeting skills, um, the interventionists, the teachers, the time they're putting in, even with COVID, even with the restrictions we've had with accessing some students who are online, coming in with outside eyes 
kudos to them. There has been effort beyond belief from somebody that's, I've never lived here before, I haven't worked here before, I haven't worked with these teachers before, but the progress that I'm seeing just by their dedication is unbelievable. And that ripple effect from the first day they walk into kindergarten, when we're here and we're visiting this AFR report on the group of kindergartners who are approaching graduation or have graduated, I hope that we all stop and take a minute, go dig this out from our file somewhere and look at the difference on that graduation rate. Because that they're teaching the kids to read and it's making it's gonna make a huge difference. You all know that. So any other questions? You're welcome. The next item in your packet is the annual statistical report. We receive this every year. And so this is um, in your packet, you have both the 18, oh, you have three years worth so that you can compare the 1920 statistical report, the 1819 statistical <laughs> report, and the 1718 statistical report. So you can compare. And for those that are listening, um, this report talks about the size of the district, the millage rate, state and local revenue, um, regular education, special education, um, dollars and percentages, um, other source of funds, current expenditures. Um, it just lists a lot of different statistical information. And so um, I wanted to make sure you all had this information. Any questions about the report? Okay. The next item in your packet is the exceeding the expectations of our stakeholders. As you all know, one of our district goals for this year as, is that in all areas, we either meet or exceed our stakeholders' expectations by 90%. And so in your survey, you have parent results, student results, and teacher results. If we increased from when we gave this survey back in October, I put increased in green, and if there's an area where we decreased, I gave you that information in red. And so you can see under the parent response, we met our goal of 90% of the time for teacher communication. We met um, or exceeded our goal of 90% under schools communication. We met and exceeded our goal of 90% under districts communication efforts. We exceeded 90% for overall safety. We exceeded 90% for meeting the academic needs of our students. We exceeded 90% for the extent to which our students feel loved and cared for. We exceeded 90% regarding school rules, um, informing parents of school rules and expectations. We in, um, exceeded our 90% goal of how confident parents are that schools are enforcing the rules and expectations. And in the next set for student survey, similar to the results in the fall, um, we don't do as well in our survey results among students as we do among adults, as we do among parents and teachers. And so that is gonna be a focus for us because um, as much as we love our parents, our number one customer are our students. That's who's sitting in our classroom every day. So we, we've got some work to do with our students. And you'll see that there are several areas, according to students, where um, we are not meeting their expectations as well now as we were in the fall. And there are also several areas where we did not meet our goal of meeting or exceeding their expectations 90% of the time. So that's an area that we're, we're gonna have to work on, trying to figure out exactly what, what our students think they need from us in order to get better scores. Yeah. So do you think that's about the 
attitudes and expectations of the teachers and the parents? Or does it say more about the attitudes of the students just not being satisfied? I mean, we I, hear a lot about yeah. the younger generations, I'm, I'll say being parents. Mm -hmm. Is it a reflection of something like that? Or what, what do you think is driving that? It, it could be. I don't know. We're going we're to have to find out what it is that they need from us that they feel like they're not getting. But you have a lot of kids who did not answer this. Correct. Thing. Correct. It's about, what, about a quarter or so, a little, a little more? Yes. That have that answered it. Yes. yes. And I will that's, say that's pretty significant because um, it's it, it's a little bit more than that. We we did not give the survey to the Glenn Duffy students, okay. well, yeah, and we weren't sure that they would understand okay. the questions. No, probably um, not. <laughs> so yes, so it's 457 um, students from 612. Okay. Or no, oh. 312, 312. Yeah. But even then, I mean. I mean, I think the surveys are great, and I do think it's an indication, but I just think keeping that number in perspective and also realizing how many kids, I mean, in, in the private sector, typically you got one or two things happening. It's either the people who are really upset about something or people who are really happy about something, the people that are indifferent or content maybe mm -hmm. are not necessarily answering them, especially particularly with kids. Sure. Not that we should not obviously try to push on this, but I think it's off, you know, that's, that's at least another piece of the puzzle that we have mm -hmm. to keep in mind too, is that's not how many... Where were the student, the parent ones as well? 408 too, which I mean, I think it's great. Yes. That we're, I mean, I think that's great as well. I just think it's important to remember the numbers now that breaks down. Too. Absolutely, absolutely. But very excited that in most areas, we met our 90% goal of meeting or exceeding. That made us very happy. On the teacher survey? On teacher, on teacher and parent. On, on that survey, oh, uh -huh. was that to all staff or was that just to, to your teachers? That was to all staff. That was certified and classified and that was P12. Okay, and so this, again, I mean, that, that's great. It's just, I wanted to, so roughly, we're looking at 200 or something? About half, yeah. Yeah, so about half of that too. Which I know people get, you know, don't necessarily want to do surveys and stuff all the time too, but I wish that we could get a higher participation when we do do them. So that we have make sure that we're getting but hopefully that just means they're content yeah. yep. That's what that yeah. Means. Yeah. did you look at data by school or not yes i um yes since this was a district goal i shared with you the district results but um i am able to break it down by school to give the principals so they know how the students and teachers and parents in their school felt in particular and last time when we gave it in the fall um we had some students that added comments that were that were very helpful that principals were able to follow up on the students were great about offering comments and suggestions and I think in every case the principal was able to follow up um, and meet the needs of that student so yes the principals do get that information so was there a big difference in the participation rates between the schools it was it was pretty even it was pretty even And the new item E um, that I put on for superintendent report, uh, this time of year, we have a lot of openings, as you can see. We just accepted some resignations and retirements, and we always want to be able to recruit and retain the best. And sometimes if our candidates um, have to wait until the next regular board meeting to be approved, uh, their current district may not let them out of their contract or they may have other offers. And so I was gonna see if the board might be willing to schedule a special meeting. And I propose just Mondays at six, like we do this one, but it doesn't have to be that. For May 3rd and June 7th, just for the purpose of hiring. And then if we didn't have recommendations ready for you on those dates, we could cancel those meetings. May 3rd and June 7th. Yes. What was the second day of motion we moved? Um, May 3rd and June 7th. Yeah. We don't have it under action item. We just have it under yeah. kind of plan. Uh, yeah, so. yeah, to see if that's okay with you all at 6 on those six. Yeah. evenings. And we'll, we'll reserve it just for hiring and 
if we don't have recommendations, then we can. And then I was also going to say I didn't have a date proposed, but if um, it would be helpful to you all in your personal calendars to go ahead and set a date for the Gravit Middle School principal interviews. Maybe sometime the first full week of May. Well, if we're going to potentially be there on the 3rd anyway, can we? Sure. We'll, if, that, we'll if, if, that, if that's what you all would like to do. Yep. Okay. Okay. Sounds great. Okay, so now we will move to action items. And new action item A1 is the second reading of the policies that we looked at last week. And those, um, I put a handout on your table for those. So it's policy 4.18, prohibited conduct, where we added the items about writing or drawing or adhering writing or drawings on school property. Item 4.25, where we moved clothing with rips, holes, and tears to be no shorter than the wearer's fingertips. And item 5.33, where we removed the district's um, requirement to have NCAA accreditation, um, but made note that we can do it at any time if we would like to. Motion we accept the corrections to the policies as noted. Second. A motion to accept those. Any discussion? Yes. I still have some reservations on this 4.18, and maybe the elementary principals can make me more comfortable with it, but it bothers me a little bit to take sidewalk chalk away from these kids. So is there any wiggle room on this, or we could make it to just to lower buildings? It's, or do you all, are you all perfectly, hey, that's fine if that's, what, but um, yeah, that one, is there any way to to tweak that, or is this just what it, we're all at peace with it. So is that something that's actively used other than this year? I mean, I understand the welcome back stuff, but is there, in previous, I know forever years ago, we would buy, and chalk was one of the things that we would buy in the packets for each of the classrooms. But I don't know, you know, how much, if that is still something that's utilized, if it's that big of a deal. It's just something, it bothered me last board meeting and it, it still bothers me a little bit. I'm fine with it, but I at least, it, it, is it, going to be that big of a hole for you guys or not yeah, really? It makes me sad. It makes me sad just kind of like whenever we had to, I mean, back at Glen Duffy all those years ago when we would play, we actually play baseball on the playground and so many things that we're not able to do for different reasons like this, it's unfortunate that that's the case, but it, I'm sorry for the little ones. So some cl clarification on that because we have all kinds of uh, posters that are hung up throughout the building. So it's that when it says adhering, have we thought about that? We could add, um, yeah, even like for your pep rallies and well, stuff. Look, yeah, I know. I'm all seeing kinds of, uh, yeah. posters on the walls here at the high school. We could add an exception that says, unless otherwise approved by building principal, or um, unless part of official school business. 
Is there currently a process of approval? Question. Shannon, other principals? <coughs> Is there currently an approval process for posting things? That's something to ponder too. Right. On this one. And if you'd like to, we can hold this one out and continue to work on it. Um, because I would want to make sure that legally it accomplished what the goal is. Um, because even with approval, their um, principals or sponsors could run into um, challenges of freedom of speech and um, maybe not being able to not approve something that they felt uncomfortable with. So if we're not happy with the way that it's worded, and I can see now the way it's written here, you're right. We, we wouldn't be able to inf strictly enforce this policy. So um, based on the questions, I would suggest that we pull this one out and continue to work on it with the attorney just to make sure that it accomplishes our goal, our intended purpose. Yeah, and there's, there's not any unintended consequences to it. Correct. So I don't know if you need to amend the motion. Yeah. Motion. Second. Want to amend the motion? Did you make it? Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's fine. Okay. I'll have to second. Have second on it. Here was a second. Tim, why not? Tim. Jay was the second on the So the amendment is to pull 418 <coughs> and approve 425 and 533A. All those in favor of the amendment say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed 6 0. And my only discussion on this other one is if we're going to make the rule, I just want to enforce the rule. You yep. know, that's. That's, I think we send such mixed messages to kids when we put these in handbooks and then we somewhat enforce them, some do, some don't. And then I think it makes it teachers, the teachers that do enforce it, you know, it makes their job harder. They're always the bad guy because they're following the rules if somebody else doesn't do it. So I think we just gotta make sure we continue to work to consistency on enforcing all of these. The next item on the agenda is um, a recommendation to initiate a wrestling program in the Gravit School District beginning with the 2021-2022 school year, um, which includes the initiation of um, a head coach stipend at an index of 0 0.075. Not to interrupt, but we need to vote on that. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry. So we just voted, we just voted to on approve the amendment. The amendment. Sorry. No, that's All right. fine. I just want to make sure. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Tracy. All right. Any discussion on that? So to accept 425 and 433A policies. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passed 6 0. All right, Mary Bell, sorry. No, no, sorry. That was my fault. I got ahead. Mm -hmm. I'll move that we initiate the wrestling program female and male student athletes beginning with the 21-22 school year, including the initiation of a coaching stipend for the head coach at an index of 0 0.075. Second. All right, so we have a motion, we have a second. Any discussion? So this is not creating a new coaching position, or is it just gonna be in a stipend to an existing coach? Just a stipend. To an existing coach. My other question is, where does soccer fall, fall on the radar of what we're doing? And I know, I, I know I've said on here long enough and I've listened to it long enough in the community. I know the, the struggles with it. I understand those challenges. But I've, I know since my kids first ended school, entered school, that's been something that, that people have asked about. And so where is it on the radar of being something that potentially is, is something that we are going to be able to offer? Sure. And I mean, it's not too late to have it on the radar for the coming year or to to set a target date for a different year. Um, Coach Mitchell and Richard Carver have been working on getting some costs, some estimated cost 
for the board. And so I think that's what we need to look at next. Um, for us to have a soccer program, we're going to either need to turf the stadium or um, do some dirt work at Maccabee Field and um, look at doing some work on those dressing rooms on the PA system and the bleachers. And so we're working on gathering some cost estimates for you all so you can see what it would cost for us to get Maccabee ready for soccer, what it would cost for us to get um, our current stadium ready for soccer. And then we can just look at those expenses and see, you know, how quickly we want to commit to doing that. I know, I know the student populations deal with it too and I know that's been a concern over the years too and I get that I just know that that's something that consistently gets asked we have the feeder program which doesn't mean that that is a reason to do it um, but I just want us to be able I guess I want to be able to have an answer sure. because somebody's going to say I had several people who didn't even know that we were considering this tonight sure um, and that's fine I mean I, I get that but um, I, to, to be able to at least answer the soccer people because I think everyone of us on here have known over the years we've had that question so it is something that we are Seriously looking at if do you think that there's any chance as far as athlete wise that it could support it because you'd have to have what seven through 12 soccer or is it just a high school thing soccer is just a high school thing so it's just a 10 through 12 or is it 9 through 12 9 through 12 okay so that really wouldn't if you had a soccer coach that's something you guys are looking at as far as what you would do with that if that I understand that it may not be feasible but I just want, I think as a board, we need to be able to answer that question because people are going to ask. Because sure. you probably have, I think that last report we had, it was 20 or 25 that were interested in wrestling. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure we're gonna have more than that in soccer. Granted, soccer takes more people to do. I mean, we all know those things, but I, I think we need to be equipped to be able to answer sure. well. Um, and like wrestling, we do, we do have students leave the Gravit School District to play soccer. Um, with other districts that have soccer. We also have families moving into Bella Vista that choose where in Bella Vista they purchase their house because they want their children to play soccer. So, And I know we, yeah. can't, we can't gauge everything we do in our district based on a sport. Mm -hmm. You know, it's gotta be something that we can support long-term and things like that. But um, that, that's all the question I really yeah. had on it was yeah. just where that lied. I, sh I'm, I think we'll be able to get that information to you all in the next week to two so that you can can look at those costs so, oh, I, I played soccer in high school and did you now college uh, at a, it was a club sport at rice at the time um, and i've been supportive of soccer for seven years and dan yates pushed it hard um, the feedback that i've seen from the coaches is the biggest concern is diluting the athletes in other sports. And that didn't seem to be a major concern for the wrestling program. So that's why I'm supportive of the wrestling program now. I'm, and I'm not too concerned about the cost of soccer because, I mean, I think we can afford that. Uh, but the, the concerns about dilution in other sports is a significant concern to me. I agree, but I also, at the same time, balance with what your parents and your community want, too, because they have, I mean, they're the day, they're the one that makes this whole thing go. And so, like everything else we're doing, it's a balance in trying to figure all of that out. It's just being well-informed as we go out to the community to answer these questions is what I think we need to do. And, and proportionately, if we have um, a lot of males who choose to do wrestling and not a lot of females, we would need to bring girls soccer on very quickly for a Title IX balance. So depending on how the recruiting for wrestling goes, it could be very soon that we would need that. We got Norman and Greg here. My understanding is the initial estimates for the cost of the wrestling program were probably high. And I think Correct. The actual costs, especially the cost to participate in the meets, are going to be much lower than those conservative estimates we got. Do we need another pep talk from Greg? <laughs> <laughs> and I appreciate also having the feedback from the coaches too. 
Yes, Coach Mitchell gathered all of that for you all. And Thank you. I can't remember if people saw, but, but Greg and Chuck reached out to potential participants in wrestling, and it, it was really strong numbers. So to me, that's another powerful message. I wasn't saying pro or con against that. I'm saying this is another area that we've been talking about and that we need to realize that as we go out into the community and people who don't know about this are going to say, well, we have spring soccer and fall soccer now and grab it. Why are we, why have you not considered soccer? And so we need to be able to answer that question because that's a fair question for them to ask us, especially as you know, if Dan was post pushing it seven years ago, that's a fair question. So it wasn't necessarily saying we talked this about is bad. for a few years too. And I know it did. And we finally got the giddy up on that, didn't we? <laughs> discussion so we have the motion on the uh, floor is to move that we initiate a wrestling program for female and male students beginning with the 21-22 school year and including the initiation of coaching stipend for the head coach at an index of 0 0.075 all right all those in favor say aye aye, aye. any opposed motion pass 6-0 like to see a match here real quick, okay? <laughs> Wait a minute. We don't have a match. We'll have this That's all right. No pain, no gain. Okay. Our <laughs> next item on the agenda is um, a request to for the tech director to lease 750 Dell Chromebooks from CDWG for the price of four yearly payments of $47,889.57. And I don't know, Daniel, if you want to come forward in case there are sure. any questions. So I'll offer a motion that we approve that, the, the recommendation to spend 47000 and change for your lease, right, Daniel? Yes, sir. And the source of funds is to use the existing funds in 2232, the Arkansas School Recognition Program, come from ASSER funds. Right. Second. Is that a motion? Sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah. Second. Yeah. So okay. I've, I've got one question about that source of funds, Daniel, okay. or Dennis, whoever's the expert, or Maribel on the source of funds. It's one of those second problem sheets. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to remember that Arkansas School Recognition Program was that money that we got because the middle school got an A and stuff like that, and so we got a pot of money? Yes. Yes, and the middle school faculty um, got to vote on how those funds were um, expended, and they voted to um, receive a bonus with a portion of the money and to purchase technology for the middle school building with a portion of the money. And the technology that was purchased for Gravit Middle School at the time um, was not coded to the rewards fund budget. It was coded to a different budget. And so that money has been sitting there. And so we have worked through with the auditor on how to do the trail of documenting what technology was purchased for that building. And so whatever um, invoices we have come up that document the dollars that were spent on that, we are now able to go back and use still has to be for technology because that's what the teachers voted for that money to go toward and so the portion of the of these expenditures that will end up at gravit middle school we can pay for out of that fund i just wanted to use this as another opportunity to thank the teachers in the middle school and the, <laughs> the middle school for doing such a great job I wish they would have given grades because I think they would have gotten an A again. All right, we have a motion on the floor, second. Other questions, discussion? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
motion passed six zero to proceed with leasing the Chromebooks. And the next recommendation has to do with the purchase of televisions that need to be replaced. Um, it's the goal of the technology department to um, remove the projectors that are currently in use and replace them with TVs to get rid of technology that requires consumable parts. It'll um, save the district money in the long run to project um, using these televisions. And so it's a recommendation of the tech director to purchase 50 TVs, mounts, tablets, and air tames for a cost of $140,652.75. And that also includes the installation of the televisions. So I'll offer the same motion to approve that recommendation. And source of funds, same source of funds. Uh, but I'm just curious, can that, the ESSER funds can do TVs and not just Chromebooks? I believe so. They could still use for virtual instruction as well. I'm not going to have to talk to Dennis on that. Uh, ESSER fund availability for television funds. Build Chromebooks and their displays for the district to pay for it from CCP. So you can buy TVs with ESSER. It's not limited to Chromebooks because TVs in the classrooms don't really facilitate online instruction, do they? Is that part of ESSER? Or I, I, I just I didn't know what the details were. It's part of closing the gap created by learning loss. So yes. Okay. It's federal. federal. <laughs> yeah. That'd be a little bit more of a stretch than some of the others. In that gray area. Yep. That gray area. <laughs> I don't mind living in the gray. So Jay's made the motion. We all know that. Yeah. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Hope, hope, second. <clears throat> yeah, I got a question. All right. That's so what are you going to do with the projectors that you remove? Currently right now, they're all between the ages of person 2006 to I think the newest one's 2014. There's really not a whole lot we can do with these. Uh, we can save the bulk that we have and we can either sell or donate those to most likely donate them to any district that can use them. That's what I was going to ask if it was possible. I know sometimes we have done things with Decatur, but I don't know that Decatur would. I mean, if any of our schools down in Southern Arkansas, if there's some type of exchange or anything where they can know that we have these things available. But I would sure like to see if, if we are able to get them to some needy districts that could use them. I think that would be great. That's a great idea. We can actually work through AAEA to do that. There are other districts when they are getting rid of things like scoreboards, or things that they'll advertise um, to all of the superintendents through AAEA, so we can definitely work to do that. Right, yeah, because for sure there's not all, all, not all the districts are as able to do things that we're able to do, so if we can help them out, I think that would be fantastic. And you'll remind me to get with you after the meeting. I've got a half a dozen or so monitors that are potentially donated by a company I used to work for. So if those can be of use in the district, I can make that happen. If it'd just be a problem, I don't want to put a problem on you. I'll do it again for me, sir. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? All right. All those in favor of proceeding with the purchase to of the TVs and the mounts, tablets, and such for $140,652.75, and that includes install, installation. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed 6 0. Thanks Thank again, Daniel. The next item on the agenda is to consider um, adding the renovation at the old ALE building to the scope of the current renovation project at the Western Benton County Career Center. The district has received approval to utilize ESSER three funds to complete the renovation because of the air quality improvements needed to the building before the building can be used as a center to serve students. We would like for that building to be our academic um, service center. Um, or like our new director, Kelly um, likes to call it our academic success center. Um, 
to help serve students who are struggling as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. So if the board approves the recommendation um, to renovate the old ALE building, then we will submit the renovation plan to the division and go through their approval process prior to bidding and construction. And attached um, to the recommendation, you'll see um, the letter from the Department of Ed saying that we are approved to use ESSER three funds for that project if the board would like to do so. Um, I will make that motion. Thank you. Right. So Hope made the motion, Tracy second, to expand the scope of the current renovation project at Western Benton County Career Center to include renovation of the old ALE building, correct? Yes. All right, any discussion? All those in favor oh, say, oh, oh, oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> hey, I am super excited about this. Um, and you know that, because we've just talked about that building before. Kelly, did you did you go to school there? Were you, did I, that was Mr. Garside's building when uh, I was there for his trades class. But, okay. So I never had classes there, but it was open. And I right. was there. So I mean, I this is this is an old Camp Crowder building. I asked dad about it this week. Um, that was their band room initially whenever it came here. I'm curious if there's any historical thing that we can do with it as well, but um, I'm so excited that I wish we had the other barracks building still too to be able to done something with that. But I'm so excited one that you embrace mm -hmm. that part of our history and are working to do that, and that we're getting it. Richard knows this is we've talked about this several times. To, yes, about he, that. Think, he went to school in that building. Yes, I mean that asbestos. Um, to, that, I know that was a hurdle, and so I'm just so thankful that we have this opportunity to do that, um, and um, just. Thank you for thinking of that and being creative, and I'm excited. I'm sure I can tell you're kind of excited about being in that. Know, yeah. it's, it's such a cool it's building. It's an exciting project, and, and every day now when I drive by it, I'm you know, picturing yeah. new what, Yeah, new and, and I hope that we keep, as they're doing that, though, I hope they keep the history part of that and don't just like completely like change it and not make it to where you can see, still see what it was. And, and I, I'm sure you will, because I know your love for history of, of maybe incorporating with the museum some of the different pieces of pictures of that through the years, because that building has served with so many things. And um, I guess, is it our old, oldest building, Richard, still that we own? Or, yeah. yeah. And so that is, it's just so exciting to embrace that for our community. I know a lot of people are going to really appreciate seeing that happen. I didn't see Richard sitting over there. Yep. So, Robin. Can you include something in the minutes on this one? Sure. I think I sent an email about it, but I'm, I want to challenge Crossland especially. Didn't they say it's going to take till December, Richard? They said, you know, five or six months. It's probably going to be two months from now. That's correct. Okay. I just want the minutes to reflect that. I want to challenge them to see if they can accelerate that schedule. Got it. Because part of the reason for doing it now is to save money you know, for some of the same deployment of assets for the WBCCC program. But I just want to push them on the time frame. I'll push them. <laughs> they want help getting asbestos out, Dad can help them. I'm working on that right now. I'm working on getting quotes for the asbestos removal. That will not be part of their scope of work. I'm trying to do that. Good to know. Got it. Okay. <coughs> All those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion passed 6 0. Thank you. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. Everything we've, we've done tonight is exciting. I'm, we, we've good stuff. Um, the next item on the agenda has to do with MAP 21. And um, recently, Richard attended a workshop where he found out that, you can tell it better than I can. Starting this school year, the Federal Motor Carrier Association is requiring that we have a MAP 21 plan. MAP 21 consists of each driver will have to go through 303 practices wow. on theory and behind the wheel. 93 units. So the, our site, our district, will have to fly to have a training site. We'll have to fly to have a trainer. And our trainer will have to be a licensed DL holder for at least two years. 
and we'll have to keep up our site and add in each new driver will have to have an 80% score on the, the 303 practices or the 93 units. That trainer will have to upload all this to the federal site before a driver can go to take their test to even get their driver's license. So starting this summer, we will apply for the training site. My trainer that I'm proposing is some, what I'm going to do is add that MAP21 trainer to our Tech 2 bus lane. And my trainer that I have now to help get the curriculum and get everything lined out with the Federal Motor Carrier Association, the feds. And moving forward, by February, we will have to be live. So any new hire moving, starting probably January, we'll start moving in that direction. This will not be an easy, used to a, a driver went through 24 hours of training with us and then went and took their test and then we had more training here. Um, this new system is really going to be tough on all districts. I move that we accept the, or approve the recommendation that Richard just described and that we've documented. Second. So I only have one question, Richard. Yes. Do you believe that that's going to make our kids and buses safer? I think that's the, the federal. Or is it federal it's overreach? The federal again. program, which every CDL holder for trucking companies, everybody will have to have a MAP 21 trainer. So it's just not schools. They say it's more training behind the wheel that will help. And oh. the, the theory. Is that a yes or a no? You do believe that it'll make it safer? I believe it'll help us deal with the bus. Our, our accident rate's exceptionally low, isn't it? School buses is the safest mode of transportation in the U.S. today. And our district, I mean, I... I don't normally like to talk about... Yeah, don't, don't jinx. Yeah. Well, I can hardly um, ever... Where's the wood? <laughs> our drivers are pretty good. Do you think this, this whole deal will impact on how you get new drivers? Yes, sir. Yeah. It's going to make it more difficult, will it? Yes, sir. And I think that also it would become more effective that we need to retain our drivers. Mm -hmm. Try to retain them as much as we can. Because if I was in the neighboring district, I would try to steal everybody. <laughs> yeah. well, that never happens. So do you have ideas? And I've asked our state guys or our local guys that we all need to come up with a deal to where if we're going to put this much effort in them, I mean, I just, I'd rather be proactive than reactive in the sense that over the next six months, you supersede whatever they're doing so that we can retain ours. Yeah. One of the biggest things that we need to do is our salary schedules are top loaded and most of the districts around us, they do better if they go down when we are top loaded. Gotcha. I must put it bluntly like that. We're going to try to make some progress on that tonight. Richard, that will help out a lot. But it's not going to be people applying for a job today to drive a bus. It's going to be very difficult here in about six months. And I hope that we simplify this to make it as easy as we can for them. So basically what you just said was our pay salary is for not for longevity. questions all right so the motion on the floor is to um, for Chad white to become the district's map 21 trainer he's currently uh, on lane one bus tech and he would move to bus two lane and his current step is step eight at 1563 per hour and he'd move to step nine for the 21 22 school year at $20.91 per hour, and it would impact the district for approximately $10,350. So that's the motion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Motion passed 6 0. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is the approval of our legislative audit. And I want to make sure it's reflected in the minutes that everybody knows that Dennis and Lisa in particular were amazing throughout this process. The, um, the amount of questions they had to answer, the amount of information they had to pull, um, the detail with which they had to, to share with our auditor and answer questions, um, and, and they never complained one time. They did a fantastic job. And... Um, because of that, Gravit got an excellent legislative audit with no findings. And so it is a requirement that the board approve the legislative audit. And Dennis, I don't know if you have more that you would like to add to that. we accept audits as opposed to approve audits, but I'll move that we do whichever of those yes. the state requires. And you may be correct. On the final page of the audit, there's a statement of intent that both Heather and I have to sign saying that we accept the audit, yes. So that, that's my motion that we accept the audit as presented. Yep. Is there a second? Second. So I'll just comment that I... I apologize for the profession that Dennis and I are in. I'm sure it's not fun reading, and it's, it's even a challenge for me to read all the components of this. So I think the accounting profession can do a better job with their reports. But the, the key thing that I want to call out, for 10 years or more, since before I got on the board, we've been trying to overcome the uh, finding that we had inadequate segregation of duties. Dan Yates enlisted me in that in an audit committee before I even got on the board, and we never made any progress in 10 years. And so I want to thank Dennis for, you know, doing a combination of setting things up in the department to improve the level of controls and convincing the auditors who tend to want to do the CYA routine so that this is the first time in 10 years or more that we have no findings like that. Great Dennis job. does a great, great job. I'm sure it was the new leadership that you had to benefit from, right, Dennis? This was before I got here. <laughs> I can't take, I can't, I, I would love to take credit for this clean audit, but I cannot. That would be Dr. Page and Dennis. All those in favor of accepting the audit? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed 6 0. The next item on your agenda is the approval of the special education title of assurances for this school year. So, Vicki, do you want to come up and talk about that? night. Mm -hmm. This is a learning time for me, these assurances, and Dennis and Maribel have both been absolutely wonderful helping me figure it out. Um, these are documents that basically say, as a district, we understand their laws, they understand their rules, there's procedures and there's guidelines, and we're going to follow them. Okay. Um, one of the things that we've discussed quite a bit is I like to be rule-bound. I am rule bound and so rules are good we have that structure so we are assuring that any funds that we receive will be used in accordance with the rules policies and guidelines of the federal law and the state of Arkansas 
that we are also going to, I'm um, looking at this wonderful font they sent us this time, um, make use of, of course, things like the assistive technology, any complaint procedures of the state, if parents are concerned, we'll follow those. Um, we're going to make appropriate use of excess cost funds, provide extended school year services for students who need those. Um, I want to compliment our teachers. They're doing a really good job explaining to parents how um, extended school year is not summer school. It is a whole different kind of thing, so they're doing a really great job on that. We will hire highly qualified personnel, um, and there's highly qualified personnel in that made all the criteria, and the other thing our staff does is a great job of going, I have the criteria to be certified and eligible for this job, but I need to learn more. So as a professional learning group, they are go-getters. Um, we also make sure that there are certain guidelines we have to meet in terms of reporting to the state. Um, there have been a couple times this year I've counted on Ms. Childress to go, oh, that's on your checklist and not on my checklist, so we made sure we got them in on time. So we're f fingers crossed we will be on 100% on the reporting. Least restrictive environment. That is always a critical issue is making sure, and that was on the performance report we looked at earlier. Um, but the res other responsibility of the district is we can and at times may need to refer a child out to a residential facility or another treatment center, but that is only after we have taken care of what we need to in our district. You know, made sure that we've kept that kid as close to possible. And um, I'm just going to tell you I'm amazed at the supports and the effort to do that. Teachers are like, don't take my child. I want them. We don't supplant what other programs are, we're here to support. So that's a key word. We support, we don't supplant. Um, and the pages continue and continue and continue. Um, we also collaborate with the other programs. So we're going to interconnect with Title I. We're going to interconnect with um, Ms. Sears' federal programs. We interconnect with Title IX. We underline interconnect with everything, and we understand that our responsibility is to make sure we follow the rules so that we don't harm any of those other programs. Records maintenance is a big thing. We have to have that. We make sure that those records are also provided when children move. Um, fiscal control and fund accounting procedures, another kudo to Dennis at this point, and um, we have provided these assurances to the state of Arkansas so they can hold us accountable. Any other questions on those? Do we have a motion to accept them? No, we don't. Yeah, I saw a motion move. to accept. Second. Any discussion? All right, the motion is to accept the special education title assurances comply with those. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed 6-0. Thank you. Thank you. Um, no, you can stay. So the next item on your agenda is a request to approve the hire of an educational examiner beginning with this um, fall, the 21-22 school year. The district currently contracts with an educational examiner who's worked in the district one to two days a week for many years. Um, Ms. Shirley has, has been a special part of our Gravit family. Um, she serves two other districts on the other days. And as the district has grown and regulations and requirements have changed, our contracted examiner has not been able to keep up with the workload required of an ed examiner um, working just those one to two days. So this year, as a result, we've had to contract with outside services in order to comply with the required assessment timelines. The total estimated cost for this service by the end of this school year is $50,000, and we could employ our own full-time educational examiner on a 190-day teacher contract at an estimated beginning salary of $46,045. So in addition to serving as educational examiner, this employee could also provide special education instructional support, assist with district standardized testing, which would help support Kim Brunkhart. So um, the addition of this position and bringing it under our wing instead of it being a contracted service could possibly save the district money and also provide the district with more services and support than we have had in the past. Um, and if you look at the 
salary, the beginning salary for this position, it is, um, it looks higher than the beginning salary of um, a teacher with a bachelor's degree and no experience because um, a psychological examiner and educational examiner license is an advanced degree. And so that's why the starting salary for this position is a little bit more. I move we employ a full-time educational examiner for the Gravit School District beginning with 2021-22 school year with a 190-day teacher contract, estimated beginning salary, $46,045 a year. Second. Discussion? How, um, how uh, many folks do you typically find that are qualified for this? I mean, is it gonna be an easy fit to find someone for this, or is this gonna be a challenging one to find? Or? I'm not, I don't want to say it's going to be an easy fit, but I am going to share that what we have to offer in Gravit is more tangible in terms of the financial that's going to cover because it's teacher retirement as opposed to if they were private practice. There's a lot of perks and benefits, but there's some very powerful intangibles, which are they're in a district that is student centric, student focused. Um, a lot of times when you hire an ed examiner or you hire a school psychology specialist or someone along that line, they're in a kind of a puppy mill kind of situation where it's test and test and test and test and test. But our teachers here and our administrators and our parents want to know more than just scores. They want to know what's going on. Um, a couple of the outside examiners have done some testing for us and I'm going to step with the, my special ed director hat and just start bragging on the gen ed teachers at this point. We've had students who did not qualify for special ed services once we did the testing, but the general ed teachers took that information, they went back and they changed how they're teaching all kids because they learned how that kid's brain worked and they could connect it with three or four other kids. Those are the things that if you were getting a starting examiner or somebody who's experienced, but they want to go out and expand their wings and use those other skills that they learned as part of it, that would be a selling point for us. So I'm I'm excited at the opportunity to put it out there and see what response we can get. So is it a, a pretty wide pool of applicants that you expect, or is it a narrow pool? I mean, because I know typically special ed areas, we have hard ones, but in Northwest, in Northwest Arkansas, lots of people want to come work here. So right. do you, is it a narrow pool that we're going to be looking from? I mean. Not many people are going to be qualified to do this. Correct, yes. Other questions? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed 6 0. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is to approve the standardization of contract links. And uh, Jay had asked for additional information beyond what was in the packet, and so I put a handout on your table with that additional information. Um, Dennis and Kim and I have been working um, on contract links and things in the payroll department for several months now to try and um, do some things for the department to run more efficiently. and. Uh, decreasing the number of contract links that only one or two people had is one of the things that we wanted to do to streamline the process in the payroll department. So by making these changes, uh, we will eliminate one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different contract links. and it will affect 14 employees. I have personally spoken to each one of those 14 employees and um, they are fine with the change. So Robin, I'll move that we approve the recommendation because those are a little different than what's printed, that we approve the recommendation to standardize the contract links uh, identified in order to increase Questions or discussion? <clears throat> All 
those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed six zero. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is the approval to rehire classified staff, and you have several pages of classified staff from the administration building, from the technology department, from our food service department, from bus drivers, maintenance, grounds, mechanics, transportation maintenance, and custodians, and the classified personnel from each one of our schools. And the school recommendations also include um, classified special education employees in those buildings. Is it we approve the recommendations to rehire all those members of the classified staff? Second. All right, so Jay has made the motion. Tim has seconded it to rehire the classified staff as presented. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed 6 0. I, I can't vote. Thank you. I abstain. Motion passed 5 0. Tracy. Thank you, Tracy. The final item on your agenda for tonight is to consider salary um, recommendations for next year. Executive session. All right. We're going into exec executive session for the purpose of discussing employment. This um, means job performance as well as decision to hire someone and refers to specific individuals, not positions, salaries, or policies. All right. Move into it.
849. Uh, six board members met in executive session for the purpose of discussing the following items pursuant to the Arkansas Freedom of Information Act 93 as amended employment. No other items were discussed and no votes were taken on any item. All right, so we have action item K still listed as salary and staff rec recommendations. So I just, we'll just want to table that until May 3rd. Right. To get some more information before we get more competitive on salaries and what kind of impacts to promote longevity in the district. Um, like Dennis and Ms. Childress have been putting together some different stuff. but it doesn't catch up those people from five to that 16 see what kind of impact it would have to get to get those folks in that three four five to that 16 to where it's up there competitive is that pretty clear mm -hmm. i mean to the six, to where the seven over here on starting we won't be seven over here so and see what kind of percentage increase you're going to have to get to get those people caught up. Because the people that's been here a long time, they're going to catch right up. So All right. Kind of, you know, so kind of on the I just want to reinforce what Tracy's saying. You know, we got the leadership of the district in this room, the principals and Norman and Richard. I don't want people being nervous that we that we haven't acted on this tonight. We want to make sure our the whole board wants to make sure we're as competitive as possible with other districts. So we're trying to figure out the best way to do that. Well, because basically we've been top heavy, and then we fall short at 16 years. I mean, we're at 17. We want to be at 7. Well, I'll even go further that we want to be in the top across the board yeah, right. at every, and that's right. our. Trying to figure out how to balance that financially is what we're trying to figure out and why it's taking a little bit longer because we recognize a lot of people have made the decisions to stay within the district um, for a long period of time. And you could maybe go to another district and you have a higher pay. And so, but you don't because you love rabbit. And so we're trying to figure out how to financially do that in the best way. Um, so we just think they're going to look for some creative ways and run some numbers and see what options there are for us. We may not be able to pull the trigger completely like where we want to, to get where we want to immediately, but we want to at least start being a little bit more aggressive and looking at it and trying to make a move towards this year and doing something. Because it's one thing to say you get you here. It's another thing to say All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. 